thanks for watching. Back in the garage here with the Xtool D1. I got the 10 watt non pro model. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about today, you know, it applies to this model, all their models, and uh, a lot of the other diode models. And, and what I want to talk about is this lever on the side here that we all use to focus to our material. That's been lying to you. Well, not necessarily lying, but, uh, well, let me explain. So, when the beam comes out of the module, you know, inside of this box, this module, there's a bunch of prisms, you know, depending on the, the wattage of your module, there might be, you know, more or less, there could be just one prism. Uh, but basically, the beam bounces around inside this box off of these different mirrors. And when it comes out, it actually comes out as a cone. And, uh, you know, wh where that gauge puts the height is actually, it ends up being a little bit higher on the on this module that I have. Maybe different on the different 10 watt modules. They may be all different. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this is my first and only. I've had it for a little over a year and a half. Um, but anyways, one thing I found <coughs> is that when I, when I touch this guy onto the material it actually ends up putting me about right here instead of right here which would end up putting me into the material which is okay depending on how thick your material is you know if I'm cutting a really thick wood something like this here six millimeter you know if I were to focus into the middle of it well that's okay and split the difference of where this beam actually converges and I, I want to say maybe that's how it was engineered which would make sense um, but this focal tolerance, anyways, when it comes to photo engraving, if you've seen any of my work, you know I do a lot of photo engraving. Uh, I, I'm only working on the surface of the material, so I want to get that spot where it's the most compressed right to the, the surface of the material. And uh, there's a test that I'm going to run where uh, I, I set up a business card in the workspace at an angle. And I basically run the beam across it at an angle, and it scores it in an hourglass shape. And we'll be able to now change the, the focus height from where this gauge is to now measure the distance between the module and where this spot is where it's the most compressed. Um, let me show you. So the tools we're going to need to run this test. This is a really important part of this. Uh, some of them more necessary than others. Uh, you know, one, we need a material to place onto the workspace to prop up at a ramp and this test that we're going to run is actually called a ramp test. Um, I've actually made a jig for this ramp test. You can find this jig in my group, Xtool Laser Engraving Tips and Tricks, Free Imager Files. Um, it's in the files section, but anyways, I cut it out of 6 millimeter wood. But basically, this is going to hold a black business card. And you can see I've ran one of these tests previously. This This sits on this. It's got little feet to hold it in place. Uh, that's really nice. Nice and secure. That's what we want when we run this. Again, a lot of people use plywood. You can use plywood and literally just prop it up. You can run a long one. Uh, I find running it on this card, I get m the most accurate results. Um, especially if I'm just going to eyeball it. and I'm not going to use something like a little microscope to be able to look at it. Um... I like to use these hold down pins on my honeycomb to actually like give this support so when I go to run it, I'll put this guy in there and then I'll put this here, oh sorry, multiple sizes, you know this is also uh, in the files section, x -tool laser engraving tips and tricks for imager files, I got the low profile guy put him in there so that way I've got something kind of hard to put it up against so that way I go to the same spot every time I'll probably end up doing it closer to the center this is just so you can see I'm gonna do this there's the rig you run it across that ramp uh, once we run it we need something to be able to measure the distance between the module and the piece that's where this guy comes in handy uh, this is called a telescopic gauge I uh, get this at Harbor Freight. It actually comes in a kit.
really nice if you got a bunch of different lasers uh, with different focus heights, especially like the infrared module, which is really dependent on this. I actually use this tool afterwards, so like once I measure that distance and I get this, and the way this works, is this actually presses. Once you once you find the distance, you twist the end, it locks it in place. You know, I'll, and I'll touch it and we'll fine tune this. And uh, it's up to you. You can take it a step further once you get once you've gotten this distance. You can measure it with calipers, and then you can cut yourself a precision block. Add some plywood or acrylic. I like to use something thick there. You see, I write save on it because I throw them away all the time. I've actually just since started using this. Like once I find the distance and I get this set, I literally just use this to focus, and I'll put this in between my module and the material instead of using the arm. Um, so let me show you how I do this in Lightburn. Lightburn, pretty straightforward here. Uh, I'm using a business card. It's like about three and a quarter inch long. Uh, I'm going to actually draw a line. Uh, start it, hold shift, draws a, a straight line in uh, ortho mode. Just draw it. And then I come back and select it, and then it says width, but my length, you know, the length of the card, I like to go a little bit longer than the card, so I'll make it like three and a half inches long. And then for my 10 watt on this card, I'm going to hit it pretty hard. Uh, I've been using this layer, so I'm going to adjust this, but I'm probably going to do like five millimeters a second, one pass. We won't do a curve offset, doesn't matter. I'm just drawing a straight line. Um, you know, and I'll get this set up and I'll hit go and uh, I'll show you how I do that. Alright, so like I mentioned, I like to do this like towards the center. So I'll probably set this up towards the center in my workspace. And I'll make sure this is snug up against this fence. And then I'll make sure the card is snug up against the feet on the jig. This way, once I score the line, I can take it off. I can wipe the char off of it. I can mark it. I can put it back on there. And then I can move the laser head over top the spot where the beam is the tightest. All right. So I got a uh, adjustable Z axis here. So I've never done this and actually used the arm to to set it to this gauge. Usually I, I've got a 3D printed air assist you can see here. I usually just set it up to where I'll loosen my Z-axis and then I'll, I'll set it like really really close. You know this is something on different modules, different machines. I don't know how it's going to vary. Uh, something you'll, you'll have to play with on your machine. Yeah, I set it to where it just starts right before and uh, in light burn I'm gonna hit go in the background here like you saw and I'm gonna burn this and you know usually I'd have the air assist going low but uh, obviously it interfered with the noise so Nice and easy. Alright, so I can't stress enough. It's really important. I just like to not touch anything at this point other than this card. Very gently. Alright. It's kind of hard to see, but once you touch it, I'll actually clean that cut line. You can use a rag, but you know, I'm just using my finger to come right off there. It's really important to make sure you know which way you're holding it. So when you put it on there, you put it right back on there. Let's see if I can get it to focus. And the card is kind of hard on these black cards, but you can see it is an hourglass shape. Now, I'm going to take a break in the video. And we'll jump back, and I'm going to actually mark on the card there where the most compressed spot, you know, where the most compressed area on the hourglass is. So 
so I'm gonna do that. All right, so I marked myself a little range there. I actually made two marks in the land, like in between those two stripes there. Sometimes it's easier for the eyes to focus. You've got more than one, one spot. You know, once you, I, I find when I put my first stripe on there, I can see if I hit the target or not. But uh, you can see now, much better now that the camera's focused, that there is a, there is an hourglass shape there, and it is very robust. Um, so now again, I noted which orientation this card was on my jig there. I've turned my laser spot on, as you can see. I'm going to gently put my card back. I had it. All right, now I'm going to move my module over top of that range there. Make sure the card's up against the, and then, uh, yeah. All right. Now I'm in position. Got the telescopic gauge, and I'm actually going to just kind of manually compress this. You know, I'll check it and see. Yeah, way too tight. You know, I'm going to measure. I'm, I'm going to try and get this to be the the exact size between here and the material down the center of the module here. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze this guy in here. It's usually where I start, it's just at random. And then, you want to check, not tight enough. Loosen it. Squeeze it in more, tighten it. Too much, and come out a little bit, not a big deal. A little bit more, I'm almost there. And really, this is you know this is the refinement process. You want it to be perfect, so don't don't rush it. You know. You can see I'm like slipping. Maybe go in just a little bit. I went too much. beautiful and that's exactly what you're looking for uh, now I can either measure this with my calipers and then draw a square and light burn and cut the square and use that square and then you put that square now this square that says save makes more sense now when I go to focus let's say I was going to focus whether you use this or you cut yourself a block now if I was going to do a project let's say I was going to do this canvas here and I wanted to set my focus now instead of using this gauge here you know we're not going to use the gauge uh, you know I want to be focused to the surface of the canvas not to the bottom side of it I'm going to you can either use the block loosen up my z-axis Tighten it. Yeah. Or, or, you use this guy, which is what I've been doing. I find this is the easiest. You know, if I lose it, I'll just rerun the test. It takes two seconds. That's it. Now it's focused to my new focus. Uh, if I were to give a, re a recommendation on the next step, I would say. I'll make a new video for this, but this is the line interval test. Uh, this is the one that light burn generates. Um, you know, and basically, once you get that figured out, the distance between the module and the the part to where the beam is the tightest, now you can try and figure out what the actual DPI value of it is. <clears throat> and you can run a series of tests. Uh, you know, there's another test you can run on the black business card. You can actually look at it with this, so you can make scans, look at it with a microscope, look at the distance between the scans. Uh, that'll give you an idea. 
Uh, and again, that's called the line interval test. You know, that's how I've been able to pull off and make some of these uh, really amazing pieces. But, uh, anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, I appreciate it. Like, follow, subscribe. Alan the Maker. Uh, find me on all the platforms. Uh, I have a group, again, X Tool Laser Engraving Tips and Tricks. A uh, ton of information, free files, some of the tools that we've seen here in the video. Uh, I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again.